Hello, friend. I'm so excited to have you join me here again today on another edition of my house story on the Tolu Craig Show. Welcome. All right. So today, don't be surprised. I'm putting on this. All right. It is actually because we are interviewing a fashion boss. <laughs> I call him a boss. All right. Okay. Um, his name is Damla Lotu Fodori. He's the creative director, CEO of Dam School Fashion Wear. And today, he's going to be sharing with us his story, his challenges, his experiences that he had had doing business, how it has been generally. And I'm sure that you and I are going to have one or two things to learn from his story today. Very exciting. I tell you, very exciting. I tell you. Okay, so promises to be a great time together. Stay tuned to the end and then we'll catch. All right? And if this, this is your first time watching, a video on this channel don't forget to click on the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when next a new video is uploaded every video we upload here has something valuable to have to you i'm telling you so see you my name is damio lao tukodre i'm the creative director for dam school i was born in um, July 1992. Um, I, <laughs> I'm a Nigerian, of course. I'm a Nigerian, of course. And um... okay, uh, my hustle. What do I do for my hustle? Um, I'm a menswear designer. Um, some people might prefer to call us tailors. Some people might prefer to call us um, uh, fashion designers. Some people might call us designers. But uh, basically what I do is menswear, so I'm into um, creating designs for menswear. Uh, well, I started um, in my university days, uh, but until uh, about 2015, I, I graduated from university in 2014, I was in University of Lagos, and um, until about 2015 there about that uh, the business actually kick-started properly when I did my um, very first collection that was the newspaper collection that I did then, uh, which was um, uh, featured in um, then Lagos Fashion Design Week 2015. There, um, that was my very first stage of pushing out. But before then, I'd actually been doing quite a number of, um, uh, like I say, this thing going to fashion shows, doing a lot of sketches, doing a lot of designs before then. But uh, it was until about 2018, I can say, I had this. Um, um, push to really start out the business side of it, yeah. I've been in business for, if I said 2015, so we're in 2020 now, so, so say I've been in business for about, should I say five years, five years, officially in business, five years. I started long before then, but I'm officially, say five years, and then, um, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Um, being in business has been has been a life changer for me particularly because for someone like me I actually did not have in mind that probably after school I was going to go get a job and things like that so I'd always been prone to being um, into business. I remember my first line of business when I was in university was um, uh, I started out a dry cleaning firm that was when I was in the University of Lagos then which was also Damsko dry cleaning firm and then because Damsko was a name that I was called by my seniors when I was in um, in secondary school then, so I adopted it into it. It was like um, expressing myself on the things that I, I'm able to do. So I started out then directly with them um, because I, I've always heard a lot about how um, business has a way of helping you to take charge of your life and things like that. So I'm, personally for someone like me, I've never been the kind of person who would have loved to do a nine to five kind of job and things like that. So I, I knew this was the way to go. For the challenges in business, um, the truth is um, we all have different kind of challenges depending on how we see it. I, mean, I believe for different kind of industries have their own type of challenges. But um, for me, particularly in business, one of the things that was the major challenge um, is starting out was um, was getting to know the kind of things that I really needed to do. Because the truth is, um, for a country like Nigeria, fashion is not. It's not part of our culture. It's not part of. Um, it's, it's just. It's just something we do for. Um, uh, when I say, let, let me explain now. When I say fashion is not part of our culture, if you go outside the country, you know, 
check their history down and you find out that um, 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 fashion has been something that shaped their culture, fashion has been something that shaped the way they did things, the way they did everything they did in their life. But if you come down here, we fashion is is built into ceremonies, fashion is built into Okay, I don't make a clothes maybe because I saw a collection, I want to stop my wardrobe, I just like the new trends that is out. No, I buy a clothes because I have a reason to buy the clothes. I have a wedding I want to attend, so I make a clothes for the wedding I want to attend. I, I, I get a clothes for something I want to do, so that, that's, that's how fashion um, works here. So um, the, another major challenge is um, like generally the challenge of, um, uh, should I say power, so to say, we, we kind of have... Um, in producing many of the things that we have to do, you know, many um, garment makers have to improvise in having to produce these things. They are not, uh, should I say, uh, improvisation in having to use things that actually perhaps are not for that purpose. They are not for that purpose, but from, um, because of the nature of what we have on ground, so you just have to find a way of using what is available to also achieve the results you want to, to get. Um, another challenge is also in the area of having to, um, you know, in our kind of profession, we work with a lot of artisans. And uh, um, these are people like, um, who perhaps uh, might not have a full understanding of what you're trying to do. They just believe, um, they just get to make home money, make and get our money and then bring it. So, but they're trying to make them understand that there is a, uh, there's something more to the idea of just making clothes and um, things like that so um, getting people who think like minds um, to work in, for you and then um, that, that, that's just like it for me so far um, well in having to overcome some of these challenges um, basically for me I think the very first thing that I did um, starting out was that I, I was doing a lot of reading I was doing a lot of watching a lot of interviews I, I watched quite a lot of interviews about um, fashion uh, and then I streamlined my kind of um, will I say research to Africa in quote because initially I was looking for Africans who were doing exceptionally well when it comes to fashion because um, before now when you hear fashion and the people that come to mind are probably the very popular brands that you get to hear the everyday popular brands that are popular in Italy, Milan, UK, New York and things like that but I, I was actually looking for designers who were African designers who were doing exceptionally well because I, I, I'm an African and then if I want to start out I need to look for people who have um, started like myself and then been able to build something for themselves so I, I was looking a lot I, I came across a number of them I think then I came across Amy Collins I came across Maya Tafo I came across Oswald Boateng I, I was very particular about Africans and it, 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 it that is just the way I operate because I, I like to I read a lot about uh, black Americans who have achieved greatness um, in diaspora I read a lot about Africans who have done exceptionally well for themselves in whatever they are doing. So I'm, I, I'm more keen to actually looking at people of my kind of color. Now this is not a of racism. I'm just very particular about um, learning from people of my kind of, um, of my kind of, or will I say my kind, people of my kind and um, people of my race who are doing exceptionally because we've always believed black to be uh, backward. We've always believed black to be uh, where you can get something exceptional from. So um, that I did a lot of reading, did a lot of studying you know, this people to for me to be able to start out in doing um, what I was doing. Um, also I think um, one of the ways we're also able to become this thing is um, um, well I, I think it, it all boils down to reading because one of the things I think reading does for you is that it, he takes you beyond the where you actually are. You probably have not have gone to that place but um, you've probably seen interviews, you've um, watched quite a number of interviews, you've read quite a number of books, you've read about their biographies, you've read about their life, you've read about how they started, how they able to build their brands and things like that. So things like this were the things that actually um, helped to overcome some of these things. So whenever they face a particular challenge, I'm like, guys, okay, just wait. Um, we know what to do. How did this person overcome it? Sometimes we even watch, I, I get to watch interviews of people who are not in fashion, but who are in business and um, who started um, from nothing. Um, I, I don't... I'm not really a fan of watching those who's, who, who, who were, who's, um, who I say, who were handed over, who the business was handed over to, in quote, and um, I prefer to those people who started from scratch because these people, they kind of have this kind of doggedness when you're faced with challenges and things like that, how you're able to overcome uh, things like that.
is a question quite a number of people get to ask if the business has been lucrative. The, the truth is, um, over the years, I, I came to understand that the goal of running a business, sure, is to make profit, but um, your business must run on a philosophy that helps it sustain itself beyond just making money. It, it, must, um, um, it must run on ideas, it must, it must run on belief systems that, that helps it to, to know that beyond the fact that we are making money, there's something we are also achieving. Like for dance school, we, we always say um, we are here to change the narrative of how African fashion is accepted on a global scale. Now for everything that we do, if African fashion has to be accepted on a global scale, that means African fashion has to give something that is beyond the normal. And um, that was why I made a shift. If you observed, for those who have uh, been following some of the things we do on our social media platforms, some of the things I do personally, um, um, I started out doing a lot of suits because I, after my NYC, I went to uh, Head Taylor who taught me how to make suits and things like that. So we, uh, we started out doing a lot of suits, we started out doing a lot of groomsmen and stuff. And if you observe the Nigerian fashion industry in 2013, 2012, 2013, 2014, there about, that was like the major, that was like the major things. Now, the biggest guys in the fashion industry were the guys that make suits, like everybody was making suits and things like that. But then um, we began to see a shift in the trend. Um, in should I say 20 by 2016 2017 there was a shift there was a major shift in the trend yeah, for those who were very conversant with that shift we found out that um, African men were no longer interested in just wanting to look sharp in a suit African men were, were now designed to want to look sharp in things that that um, uh, should I say that are made by Africans of course um, but also has um, the African touch in it. So we, we saw the rise of kaftans. We saw quite a number of people started making kaftans. A lot of people started making kaftans and uh, people started doing a lot of things as we got in kaftans. And then you also observed that it was also because um, this was something that was definitely lucrative because people were coming in to buy. Now, the truth is, in the Nigerian fashion market, there are quite a number of people. There are a huge number of people on Instagram right now. You find a whole number of people who make clothes and things like that. But um, the truth is, for those who have been consistent over time, is um, they have found a niche for themselves. So you, we all make kaftans, but how do I make kaftans? Like for me personally, for some of the designs, having as creative director for them, so one of the things I, I tell my people is that um, uh, um, if you walk from my house um, on my street, say for example, um, just take a stroll, you can find close to about 10, 20 tailors before you get to the main road. Now, the truth is, they are, these people are doing almost the same. They are also producing clothes like us. Now, the difference there is um, in what we put on us. Because if there is no difference, people will prefer to go to them because, yes, they are way cheaper. So people prefer to go to them and just get the characters they want to do. But if we, so I, I started, we started out making sure that we had like a, uh, we created something that was different, something that were, was different from the norm. We started doing things different. We were making the same kind of character, but we started putting some kind of touches that made it look um, like something that was artistic, uh, um, something that had a form of art in it, so you're not just wearing a cloth, you felt like you're wearing a piece of art on your body and, and things like that, so that, that's what we started doing, and then we started making this shift, and then, trust me, um, he, he became more lucrative, you get more people ordering for wears, people probably you, that they, you don't even know because you're on social media, and thanks to social media, thanks to the guys, thanks to Facebook, thanks to Instagram, thanks to WhatsApp, you know, and um, they, they, they cannot doubt the help that they have done business you know i say social media is the platform that puts both the big and the small business on the same platform so we are competing on the same platform and then we are we are we are scrambling for the same customers and then the customers find us on the same same place and that, that's what social media has done for us so the business yes uh, has become very lucrative over the year um, until about last year I, I started understanding that um another side of business um, uh, I started saying that if a business has to grow long, if a business has to stay long way before uh, ahead of the existence of founder, things have to be put in place, structures have to be put in place, systems have to be um, put in place to to get the business going. Well, um, uh, in the long term, we hope to really achieve what we have consistently put out, um, changing the narrative of our African fashion is accepted, changing the narrative of that when you wear peace, when when, when, when Nigerians or when Ghanaians, when Kenyans, when whatever part of Africa gets to wear a cloth that was made in Africa, he can.
comfortably wear that clothes anywhere in the world. You can, you can wear it with pride. You can wear it with, um, you can wear it understanding that this comes from where I'm coming from. And then I don't have to wear suits. I don't have to look like, a, um, like, like, uh, like, like. I don't have to look corporate to look good. You know, I, I can also dress in, 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 in African attires that also look very smart. That also has art nature on it that also that also gives you the kind of comfort you get from wearing these things that come um, from from the west yeah well, what keeps me going uh, I, I believe every human being has an imagination and um, has I, I, I've come to understand that um, um, uh, the imagination of every human being definitely goes wild beyond what uh, what they can even explain and then um, like one thing we always ask in dam school we always ask what is your imagination because we believe that um, um allowing our imaginations to go way beyond its comfort zone allows us to bring the best out of ourselves so um i, I think one of the things we have done um, that actually keeps me going is that we are we are conscious of always wanting to know what people's imagination is we, we want to know what what are you what do you what's your imagination of how a clothes should look like um we get to ask some of our clients to ask them okay how how do you want your clothes to look like how beyond what you have seen you know some people tell you okay i want to make a clothes i have a picture i'm going to send to you and then i'm going to order or probably i've seen this thing but what's your imagination of how a clothes should look like what do you mean you know some people just go some people are very wild about their imagination of the clothes should look like this clothes should look like that yeah. so you're sketching you're putting things down and then you're like okay and then you produce that um for the for the client and then um art keeps me going personally i'm, I'm very prone to art I, I don't like to do things the normal way everybody does it so things like this have a way of keeping me going and you know art doesn't you're not doing the same thing every time you're changing you're changing the concept of how it looks like you're changing it you're making it look better you're making it look good over time so i think this things have a way of keeping me um going Yes, I believe in Nigeria. I believe uh, I, you know, I, I never put out a picture. I never put out a picture of any of any of our stuff as the creative director without having to put um, "Made in Nigeria." Uh, no, I, I, I don't. I don't do that and because "Made in Africa." I go as far as doing "Made in Africa," "Made in Nigeria," hashtag "Made in Africa," "Made in Nigeria," "Made in Lagos." Because I, I, I believe we must promote our own, and then we, if nobody's going to promote it for us. We must promote. Uh, when I remember one of my mentors in business, Tri Masi, who I found out they connect, we always say something that um, Africans are, are some of the finest people you could find uh, across uh, the, 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 the globe. And then if you, if they have been able to survive the hardship, the things that we go through in our continent, if they have been able to survive over the years and then uh, uh, um, and scale to many of these things, it shows that we have this spirit of resilience in us and we are able to give out um, our best if you go outside the country uh, many of the doctors outside the country are, are blacks coming from nigeria coming from other neighboring african countries and um, uh, you know it shows that we actually have have it in us and um, i believe so much in this country i believe so much in what we can achieve i believe so much in what we can do I believe so much in, uh, like I wish that people were not going anywhere. We serve people, we make we make designs, we make uh, clothes for those that are Nigerians in diaspora across different parts of the world. And then when they wear some of those things, they're very proud of where it is coming from. So I, I believe um, Nigeria, I, I believe in my country, I believe in Nigeria. Well, if, if I'm to give an advice to a young person, <laughs> I'm also a young person, so I'm also just starting. I'm not that old in the business, so to say. Um, if I'm to give an advice, I, I think the advice I would give is um, uh, think for the long haul. Ibukuma Mushika, um, chairman of First Bank and then founder of the Cheer Center, said said this in one of the conferences that I went that I watched uh, um, speak. And then Africans must think for the long haul you're not just doing something because you want to blow you hear people say i want to blow i want to hammer things like that so everybody just trying to make things you know that's why we find the rise of um of those that are going to internet fraud and things like that i, I don't i don't think we should be 
there should be a place of growth, there should be a place of patience, there should be a place of knowing that um, you don't just blow, you have to grow. So, you know when people say, I, I want to blow, I want to blow, grow. When you grow, you grow systematically, you know how to, how you, you are documenting your, your process over time. Now, in, in the next 10, 20, 30 years, when somebody is, is trying to look at your life to start out, the person can see, can watch your progress over time. So he too can, can follow the steps that you have gone through to, to get to where you are. Because you are not just doing it for yourself, you're doing it for others that are coming behind us. And um, quite a number of young people, I just believe we just have to, we just have to make sure that we are reading the right kind of things, we are listening to the right kind of things, we are exposing our minds to the right kind of things, we are doing the right things that we are supposed to do because these are the things that would would um, speak for us in the long run because over time um, we will not we will not all remain this way uh, we will keep growing we will keep going so so that it, it, it's not just going to be a thing of having to go in age and not going in, in wisdom and not going in uh, the way we handle things as regarding um, our lives so young people just have to be patient and um, young people just have to know that growth is a process it's not something that happens overnight what do i think i regret that i should have done and i didn't do i think if i am to um if i am to look back one of the things is uh, i think i i i would have at least worked somewhere before i started business yes if um, I would have worked in an organization, a proper standard organization before I started out. If, if, I had, if I had a need to rewind time, I think I would have done that, yes. Um, you know, a lot of people say, just start your business and things like that. Why? Because there were a lot of mistakes I made in the, first, in the very early years of doing business. And then I, I believe I wouldn't have made these kind of mistakes if I had understood some bit of structure. I've, I've worked in a, in a structured organizational setting, so I know what is expected. It was not until late uh, we started imbibing structure in terms of, you know, the old thing had been, uh, we just make clothes and just sell clothes and things like that. Then I began to understand that there's a need for structure. We, we need to, I read this book, it changed my life. It's called the E-Meet, the Entrepreneurship Meet. You could um, download it. Um, it's going to help you a lot. I downloaded it on this app or e -book, um, any book, sorry, any books. And I read the book. I consumed it. It was recommended by, um, by, um, Banky W had a program where he spoke at um, the Just Concluded um, Social Media Week. So I read the book and then changed a lot of things about uh, how, and then I, I began to see how it was structured. So we, we, we put a structure on that runs and we have a standard structure coming down from the chief executive director, down to the creative director, down to the marketing manager, down to the accounts manager, um, down to the head tailor, down to the headquarter and down to the tailors that we have that work for us. So we have the structure, the program properly structured out. So everybody has an understanding of what he's supposed to do. So it's not just, we're not just working like another kind of tailor on the road and things like that, because these things are, are the things that, that um, help differentiate us from those that are, those that are, um, that are outside. And um, uh, another thing that public probably would have wished for is, um, I've gotten close to some of my mentors in, in the fashion industry because the truth is, um, I, we're just doing it out of zeal. We're just, ah, I want to do this thing, I'm very inspired by some of these things. So we're just working out of zeal and we were, we were probably not working out of knowledge all the time. But over time, we saw that um, there, there, there was a place for knowledge, there was a place for, for acquiring the requisite knowledge to grow in all the things that we needed to do. So I, I believe. Um, um, it has been it has been great doing business, and um, I look forward to doing business, the fashion business, all my life. Well, except unless I'm a Christian, I accept if God is saying this is the next thing to do. I look forward to doing this and getting um, and growing uh, this over the years because I, I've done it for quite a long time. I, I see the possibility of of um, of huge growth if consistent hard work is put in the business. So I, I think. If we continue this way, it will actually give us um, what we want. So, um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope this has been able to to help those who who are, are in the fashion business trying to start out, and also able to inspire some people to do to pursue our dreams.
Yeah, welcome back. I want to believe that you've learned something. Okay, one of the things I learned, he said, you don't just expect to blow, you grow. <laughs> All right, so that was exciting. You know, that was inspirational. At least I've been able to learn one or two things that I can implement in my own business personally, and I'm sure you do too. All right, if you've learned anything, why not just drop it in the comment section below so that we can interact together. I'll be so waiting to hear back from you. All right, thank you very much for joining me on this uh, segment once again today. Wednesdays like this, we post my hustle story of beaming entrepreneurs that will definitely have something to our viewers out there. Like I said before, do you like what I'm putting on? Okay, it's looking so good. It was made by Damsko. All right, I'm looking good and I'm just feeling fly on what I'm putting on right now. Okay, so you want, to, you want to contact him, you want to do business with him, why not? Check the description below, you will see his contact, where he can be reached. His social media handle is also there, so that you can follow him up. Alright, so thank you very much for your time, and look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget, if this is your first time watching any video on this channel, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it, so that you'll be notified when the new video is uploaded. Alright, see you, bye!